Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. For today's video, this will be a book review for The Justice of Kings by Richard Swan. I read The Justice of Kings back in November uh, 2021, but because uh, today is the release date, uh, the UK release date of The Justice of Kings, so I thought I might as well do a review on this channel as well. Because I really love this fantasy debut by Richard Swan, and I want more people to give this book a try. Personally speaking, The Justice of Kings was totally addictive. It is a riveting tale about morality, law, and justice. The Justice of Kings by Richard Swan went into my TBR pile after uh, Orbit Books sent me a limited advanced reading copy, uh, this one. Judging from the premise of The Justice of Kings, I had a feeling that I would be reminded of reading War for the Rose Throne series by Peter McLean, which is one of my favorite ongoing series right now. Empire of the Wolf isn't a gangster fantasy series, but there are still a lot of things to love here if you love uh, War for the Rose Throne series by Peter McLean. Honestly speaking though, back then uh, in November, uh, The Justice of Kings didn't went into the top of my TBR pile until I saw the gorgeous cover art done by Martina Fachkova. I actually immediately pre-ordered uh, The Justice of Kings after I heard that Martina Fachkova will be doing the cover art, and it looks absolutely stunning. I think both the cover artist and the cover designer, uh, Lauren Panepinto, did a fantastic job on the cover art for The Justice of Kings. But can the book live up to the quality of the cover art? Yes, it can. No man is above the law. This is one of the main themes of the novel, and the story follows Sir Conrad von Walt, the most feared justice from the Order of Justice, who stands in the way of chaos in the Empire of the Wolf. Rebellion, heretics, and powerful patricians challenge the power of the imperial throne, and Conrad von Walt determines to uphold the law by way of his sharp mind, arcane powers, and skill as a swordsman. But he's not alone on his missions. Sir Conrad von Walt is accompanied by Helena Sedanka, an orphan, his clerk, and protege. When the pair investigate the murder of a provincial aristocrat, they unearth a conspiracy that stretches to the very top of imperial society. As the stakes rise and become ever more personal, von Walt must make a choice. Will he abandon the laws he sworn to uphold in order to protect the empire? The official premise of The Justice of Kings may lead you into thinking that The Justice of Kings is about uh, Justice Conrad Von Walt, and in a way, it is true. However, Von Walt is not the main POV character. He doesn't even have any POV, uh, POV chapter in this book. The entire story in The Justice of Kings is told through the first-person perspective of Helena Sedanka. We're reading Helena's writing and recount of her past. This storytelling style is similar to reading Fitz's narration in Farseer trilogy, mixed with Akil's narration in the Blood Sunders Ark trilogy by Jeff Salyards. It's more similar to Blood Sunders Ark, actually. In the Blood Sunders Ark, we follow the tale of Akil as he writes his journey as he follows Brylar Kilcoyne. In The Justice of Kings, we're following Helena's intertwining lives with Justice Conrad von Walt and many other individuals. The murder mystery element in a fantasy world filled with great character development, plus the thought-provoking discussions regarding law, and the decline in morality made The Justice of Kings a very compelling read. Justice Conrad von Walt's intimidating presence will most likely stay with readers. But I have to give more praises to Richard Swan for actually using uh, Helena as the main POV narrator. I was slightly worried about this initially. All the premise and advertisement for The Justice of Kings seems to highlight Justice Conrad von Walt as the main key strength of the narrative of the book, and, and I wasn't sure Helena could win my expectations on this. I mean, I even feel tricked. However, it all really worked out for the better. I'm quite confident that having Helena as the main POV character actually formed a superior narrative. And now, I'm not so sure the novel would be as strong if we actually have uh, Justice Conrad von Walt as the main POV character. Also, I've mentioned von Walt and Helena constantly in this review so far, but there is another important character, Dubine Bresinger. The trio and dynamic between von Walt, Helena, and Bresinger were simply colorful and engaging. I never felt bored reading their interactions, and we get to gradually witness the background of the three characters. And I loved it. I think the three of them gave a lot of food for thoughts regarding justice and morality. It's worth noting that the world building in The Justice of Kings aren't full of magic or fantastical creatures. The world in The Empire of the Wolf felt similar to our own, and Von Walt does have two magical abilities on his arsenal, but that's about it. A few other magical abilities were displayed, but they're not focused upon, at least for this book anyway. The sequels might have more magical usage, but I do think the two soft magic frequently exhibited in this novel was enough to give variety to the way the plot plays out. 
first there is the emperor's voice which is more or less the ability to command people to tell you the truth. This is a bit similar to Lelouch Geese from Code Geese if you're familiar with the anime. The second one is the power of necromancy. This isn't resurrection per se, but Von Vald and other justice could use this power to speak with the dead. Seeing how Swan utilized these two powers in Helena and Von Vald's investigations was so intriguing to me, and I really love how it's emphasized that these powers cannot be used carelessly. Most of the time, it is shown that being smart tends to be more helpful and safe than using just these magical powers. As you can probably guess, having access to this kind of special powers easily blurs the line between good and evil. No matter the intention or no matter how good a person is, owning too much power will transform a person completely. I love reading how Swan continuously combine all these elements to continuously discuss this topic and theme, both in explicit or subtle way. Books that inflict one more chapter syndrome, in my opinion, is a great book. And the Justice of Kings achieved that relatively fast. It did take me about a quarter of the book for me to feel fully immersed with it, but after that, everything just flew with haste. I am also a fan of epigraphs in fantasy novel. Authors can use this space for multiple purposes such as creating mysteries, giving revelations, world-building exploration, or maybe putting philosophical passages. And the latter one is definitely dominant in the Justice of Kings. Here is one of my favorites. Power does things to a man's mind. It unlocks his baser instincts which the process of civilization has before occluded. Powerful men are closer in mind to wild beasts than they are to their supposed human inferiors. And here is another one. It is impossible to impress upon a man the severity of a situation until the point of its remedy is long past. It is something to do with the nature of a human being, that ingrained idiocy. The gods must shake their heads at us in disbelief. In comparison, I don't think I've read many fantasy novels where the person of authority are the main characters. Usually, it's the other way around, especially in stories that revolves around rebellion. Should the law be upheld completely? Should it be abolished? What kind of rules should be set upon society for it to truly work together. And is that even possible? Battle scenes are indeed rare in the Justice of Kings. But the grey morality and Von Vault's magical applications were sufficient enough to make sure that the narrative remains captivating to read. The Justice of Kings is out now and it was one of my favorite reads of 2021 and if I had read it this year, it would have been in one of my top reads of 2022 as well. The Justice of Kings just felt effortless to read and it is an incredible first book of a series. I definitely look forward to reading the sequel. Once again, and as expected, Orbit Books has landed a gem in the cover art and story department. So yeah, that's my thoughts on The Justice of Kings. Do let me know whether you plan to pick up this book or not. And if you have read it, let me know your thoughts on the book. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye.